My name is Vince Mazur. I'm a product and persona marketing engineer here at Altium. And today we're going to talk about the project releaser that's included in Altium Designer 18. So what I'm going to first launch into is discussing some key release process goals. I'll then follow that up with an overview of the project releaser. I'll give a demonstration. Uh, we'll summarize and then open it up to questions and answers. Uh, as you go through the webinar today, feel free to type your questions into the Q&A window and we'll address those at the end of the uh, presentation. Um, let's go ahead. I'm also going to mention that I will be initiating two polls. Uh, this is useful data that will help us understand how our customers are using the tool. Uh, we'll, we'll introduce those uh, throughout the presentation here. Just a couple of simple questions to answer. So with that, let's go ahead and get into key release process goals. I mean, it's key when you're releasing a board, releasing a product, it's key to convey all aspects of the design. And the design data needs to be conveyed in a way that the recipient can use it. You want to be able to give just enough data for the recipient to do their job, whether that's manufacture, whether that's build a test fixture, whether that's internal QA or design review due diligence. It needs to be valid, of course. You need to have consistent data output. I mean, we'd all like to press the release button once and be good to go all the time, but frequently that's not the case. You need to go back, make some changes, and when you do press that button again, you want to make sure that everything is consistent. You want to have a minimal impact on the designer. I mean, there's enough activities that designers have today chasing down EMI issue, issues, looking for uh, discrete components, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You want to support maintainability. Many products have long useful lives and this documentation and this release data is going to be important over the life cycle of that project. So it's important to release it in a manner that supports downstream maintainability. And you want to rapidly deploy your release process in your organization. You don't want this to be a burden. You want to be able to rapidly deploy it so that you can have these benefits as you go forward in your release processes. So let's talk about Project Releaser. And I'm going to first talk about the baseline capability that's been in Altium for quite a while, output generators. I mean, in the past when it was time, I know when I was a, uh, uh, releasing my design, I would generate the Gerber, I would generate the drill data, I would go into the output folder, I would zip that up for my fab company and assembly uh, company and uh, forward that information to them. So a foundation of getting data out of your designs is these output generators. Well, output generators, as I just described, it's sort of a manual process. And you have to go in there and, and say, I... I generate the Gerber data, but then I'm interrupted. I may make another change to the design, generate the drill data. It doesn't take too much of an imagination to see how that can get out of sync uh, with our busy schedules today. That's output generation. That's the, the foundational level of, of output. These are file level uh, outputs. The next level that Altium provided uh, going quite a ways back, are output jobs. And you can think of output jobs as containers that can, can execute the given outputs as required. You define these output jobs for different functions. It might be a documentation package. It might be an internal release. It might be a release to a specific fab house that has specific requirements for the formatting of their data, etc. Uh, this is done, uh, it's multiple, it's characterized by multiple file types. You can have Gerber, Drill, Assembly, etc. cetera. Uh, file folder packaging or file level packaging are definable in output jobs. 
Now, we notice that our most efficient customers are using output jobs, and our research indicates that they get about a 70% improvement in their release process by using output jobs. Uh, it's a very strong capability, and that is indeed what Project Releaser is built on top of. You can think of Project Releaser as a conductor for the orchestra below in this diagram. With one button, you can execute many output jobs for as many variants as you want, and you have a complete release environment and anytime the design changes, you simply go into this project releaser and repeat the process. And it is considerably more efficient than just output jobs. In fact, we estimate that you'll get an additional 20% of efficiency in your release process by using the project releaser. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and launch into the demonstration. You should see the Altium Designer workspace at this point. Uh, I've got the board in three-dimensional uh, view here. And what I'm going to do is just go into the project releaser. This, this, pro this board is ready to release, and I'm going to go into the releaser. Now, we can access the releaser from the project file and just don't go to the project releaser. Or we can go to the project itself, right-click and access the releaser. So what you're seeing here is the cockpit, if you will, for the releaser. We've got a lot of information here. This is its own little environment. On the left side, you're going to see the steps that we're going to go through. We'll go through each of those and explain each of them as we go through the presentation. Uh, we're going to first configure the local release. We'll then validate the project, generate the data, uh, review the data, uh, pack the data, and then you get an execution report. So configuring the releaser, this is the default configuration. And you'll notice that I have two output job files in my project, assembly and fabrication. So the releaser is designed to initiate these output job files. So the fabrication data that's going to be generated will be generated by this fabrication out job. And I call this target folder fabrication. I have assembly data that uses this out job here. And I have two variants in this design. I've, for my design purposes, I call it no variations and then default fivefold output. So what I have uh, is a container here for this variant, the assembly data for this variant, and the assembly data for the other variant. Now for these target folders, I went ahead and just gave it the product number for the variant, my internal uh, project number or board number. And, and these are all changeable by the user. Now we only have the four sections here. And I might also mention that by default, we do include the sources and the release data. You certainly don't need to provide that to your contract manufacturing companies uh, or board fab houses, but this information is, is preserved in the release as we'll see later. Uh, we can add our own section if we want to. You can continue to add sections. You could have, say you had one for a test fixture manufacturer. Or you might have a group of files that a team inside of your own company you know, prepares an independent QA analysis might be working voltages of parts along with their placement, or et cetera. The, the point is you can have as many of these sections as you want to. And as we go through the process, you're going to see that each one of these areas generates its own folder in the folder structure. Now, you can configure your output to go to one consolidated zip file where all of this information would be zipped up into a single file or you can configure it to go to folders. I'm going to be using folders for this demonstration. So at this point, we are ready to go. I'm going to hit the prepare. Uh, and I might mention that there are two options. You can either prepare 
or you can prepare and pack. Uh, prepare and pack would mean, hey, I want to bypass reviewing the data and I just want to package it and render it in its final format. I want to go ahead and just prepare it because reviewing the data is a very important aspect and very valuable aspect of the project releaser. One of the first things we see is that our project was modified. The system is asking me to save it. If this project was under uh, version control, I would get a similar type of dialogue. The bottom line is, is that the project releaser wants to make sure that you're using the current data when you go through the release process. I've got a problem here, it looks like. Uh, I've got shelved polygons in my design. So the system drills down into the design and can even see some things that you've done there. If any of your DRCs at this point failed, you would get indications of that. Uh, I don't want to continue, and I'm going to go ahead and cancel the releaser. And we will go into our board here. And let me see what's going on. So I'm going to restore that polygon. And there we have it. And why don't I just jump right back in to the releaser. I don't even need to invoke it. I can just go through the prepare step again. Uh, the system will uh, prompt me again to save the file because I didn't save it when I made that change. And now we're going into the preparation step. And again, all of these are executed by your output job files. As I mentioned in the presentation, an output job file can output many multiple file types. And that's what we're doing, but we're doing it in an organized way. Uh, fabrication data, in this case, is being kept separate from the assembly data. Many times, you're not going to need to provide the fabrication data to the assembly house if you're initiating your own board fabrication. So we're going through all of these steps right now, and, and like we saw at the beginning, the DRC is, is uh, invoked at the beginning, and if there's any issues, you'll be flagged about it. If we were generating a, a bomb using our active bomb capability, right now we're just generating a straight bomb, just pulling the data from the design, but if we were using active bomb and we found that we couldn't get a part, there were no suppliers for a given part, we would be flagged about that at this level. So at this point, the data preparation has completed. And what you have right here is a sandbox. This is not the released package. This is a sandbox of data. You can come in and you can look at the project files that are, that are going to be released. You can look at, say you want to look at your draftsman document. You could bring that guy up, take a look at that. Uh, say I want to take a look at my pick and place files. I can do that. I can take a look at the Gerber data. can come in here and invoke uh, Camtasia. And, and let's make sure that I did indeed restore that polygon properly. It was the one on the right. We can see we're good to go there. The point is, is this is an interim step where you can really do those final reviews. I know it took a while for me, even when back in the days when I just generated the Gerber data, I always still wanted to look at it and, and double check what was actually going to be given to the fabrication. Uh, one of my favorite views is this. Uh, we elected in this uh, demonstration to generate a three-dimensional view, a uh, three-dimensional PDF. I was a late adopter of three-dimensional design within Altium, and I can't tell you how many times I have had to take pictures, I hate to admit this, but I took pictures and provided it to the contract manufacturer to be able to show what components went on the top and which one went on the bottom. And the point is, is any type of output generator that we provide can be in this symphony again, to use that uh, analogy. So once we decide we're ready to go, we go ahead and just hit release. Okay, and then at this point, it's rendering the data where in and in what format you want it. And that can go to any file destination that Windows can support, whether that's a local file destination or a network-based file uh, destination. And we also give you a 
summary report. Now, at this point, the project has been released. We are good to go here. This is a review of the sources that we put down, the fabrication files. This is just sort of a tree that you can uh, review of everything that was released, a summary screen. Now we can go directly into the output folder and we'll see that these are the, the four folders. I've got my sources that we discussed. This could just be used for internal. I've got my fabrication data. This is what could be sent to the fab, fab house. I've got assembly data for this variant and assembly data for the other variant. Now a common question that we've been getting is, hey, these folders are great, but I really want to upload a zip file and right now we do not have the option to create these as zips but to do that you simply come in here and you know there you go I mean you can do that it is manual it is something that many have requested that we add the capability for and it is certainly something that we have raised to uh, our development's attention so this is the project releaser. We've output this. If we made any other changes, we just go in there. Well, we actually saw that during the demonstration. Actually, I did have to make a change, restoring that polygon. And that is the process. It's a relatively straightforward type of a situation. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch back and we're going to summarize this and then we'll open it up to Q&A. So why do you want to use the project releaser? I mean, a one button push process that we demonstrated today is just considerably easier than alternatives. It's also very consistent. Yeah, you do have to set up some aspects of this, but to have that repeatability, to have that flexibility is very valuable and it reduces a lot of tedious work that could be better used uh, for more challenging aspects of getting a product to market. It's essential to have this consistent, complete, and repeatable process. Even if you want to carry through like manufacturing test procedures, internal spreadsheets, things that you may have as part of your project, artifacts of your project, but not do not necessarily want to include in the release package that goes to your fab house or assembly house, you can output those files and you can render those into their own folder or as part of the internal release. So all of the data that is associated with getting a board done uh, can be output into these this folder system. At the end of the day, what we don't want to do is release a board, forward it to our manufacturer, and then get it back and find out that it doesn't work without redesign or considerable rework. You know, what we're trying to do is assure first pass success. And you want this system to be flexible and deployable. All of the project releaser data is stored in the project file. You can create project files that are project templates that you can use to start new designs. And for instance, if you're a service bureau and you have different clients that have different requirements, you can set up default or, or project templates for those clients and when you create a design off of that template, you'll have the ability to release it in the format that they're expecting. That's really what we wanted to discuss here. I certainly appreciate all your of your time and uh, wish that you guys have a super day. At this point, we're going to go ahead and end the meeting. Take care now. Bye-bye.